G'day folks, my name's Mark Sundin. I'm uh, standing here in front of uh, Epic's brand new V9 surf ski. Um, we've, we, we got our first uh, lot of them about uh, three or four days ago. To, to much um, excitement, people have been test paddling our demo for the last couple of months uh, to, to, to really a great um, response. And over the course of taking a few photos, rolling out a couple of videos of the ski in action, uh, I find myself every day getting asked by people, not just here in Australia, but from around the world, when are you gonna write a review? Um, lately, if you follow what we get up to, we've started doing a few videos, DIY videos, and I figured, you know what, rather than write it all down, um, I might actually walk you through the boat, explain some of the features, and do a little review in front of the camera. So wish me luck, because I don't know how this is gonna go. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll see reviews of kayaks around the web. Certainly when the internet first started, they were everywhere and people used to repeat them word for word. Um, there were some that were really successful. One I remember in particular that seemed to convince half the world that a particular ski was the best at, at everything ever. And we started seeing them suddenly appearing quoting this review and well I never really thought they were but uh, but there you go <laughs> they can be influential um, our business is Expedition Kayaks we're, we're dealers for Epic uh, here in Sydney as well as uh, a few of the other good quality surf ski brands so make no mistake I'm trying to sell you the ski okay I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not unbiased however in the scheme of other surf ski brands that we sell I don't really owe Epic anything. Um, if, if people come in and ask me about a ski that might suit them, tell them a little bit about themselves and what they want to get up to, well, I'll steer them towards the one I think is best. I don't, I don't uh, have any great affiliation with Epic, um, you know, more, any more deeply than the fact that we love selling their boats, they're beautifully built. And lately, they've reconfigured their designs and this is the latest incarnation of that slow reincarnation. That began with the new V12, which is their high performance ski. It went from a boat that had a reasonable small amount of rocker, was really fast on flat water and turned into something that was really good downwind and very instinctive. The V10 followed, which was obviously so clearly derived from the V12, but a little bit more stable and user friendly, obviously not quite as quick. Uh, the V11, which I'm unfortunately at you know, 97 kilos, too, too big to paddle really. Um, everybody I know who does paddle it says the same thing. Another demanding ski, an elite ski, a genuine elite ski. And the V9 has now come along to slot in between where the very popular V8 Pro and the long-term V10 Sport sat. So now with Epic, you've got V8, V9, V10, V11, V12, and also their, their more recreational V5 and V7. For me, uh, as a non-elite you know, paddler, certainly in surf skis, I'm interested in how these things catch waves, how they perform in moving water. I don't, I don't really care how they go in flat water. In my book, most of the surf skis from this level up are pretty fast. If you're fit, if you're determined, if you've got a good paddle stroke, you'll probably be able to make them go pretty fast on flat water. Um, the idea of going to a faster boat to go faster and sacrificing all that stability, I believe just takes away your options when it comes to getting these things out in the conditions they were meant to be out in, which is waves. You know, you've never had more fun than when you've got a few waves up your hooter in a good surf ski that doesn't make you feel intimidated or anxious. So you won't see me on the leaderboards <laughs> of any of the ocean races, um, but I can paddle all of the skis all the way up to the V12 with, with reasonable competence. I'm, I'm cheerful and happy on them in most conditions. Um, and I sure do love getting out in waves and in downwinders. So I'm gonna walk you through the ski, show you a few of the features. I've got a little bit of video to cut in and out of, of the thing in action and give you a little impression of, uh, you know, my view of what this ski does where it fits and who's going to find it appealing. Firstly to the seat. This is a little narrower than uh, paddlers who've paddled V8 Pros, V8s or even V10 Sports would be used to. 
It's a more fitted seat. I think it's about a centimetre narrower, for example, than the V8 Pro. Um, importantly, this hump here is lower, which means smaller paddlers are going to be able to get into it and paddle it without um, hitting the back of their legs on, on the hump. It's a really uh, nice feature that many manufacturers have woken up to recently is allowing their skis to have a broader fit of, uh, of, of uh, certainly um, heights and also shapes. So as far as Epic seats go, it's a little higher. It feels higher than most, um, than most of the seats that, that have, um, have been in other models, certainly all the Generation 2 skis. And that's a really nice feeling. The ski sort of moves under you in a very predictable way. So I, I personally think the seat's great. I'm not a great one for waxing on about how comfortable they are. But as a rule, Epic skis have what I'd probably call a 90% rate of we love it. Um, other brands are even higher than that and some brands are like 50-50s and I think as far as trying to make a shape that fits every single person's bum, Epic have been pretty successful and this is no different but it is a little bit more fitted, it's got a, a more, uh, you, you wear this ski a little bit more than you do with, uh, with some of the earlier models. They've got a couple of um, uh, accessories, the, the non-slip foot pads there that slot onto the foot pad, onto the footrest there are a really good thing to have if you want a bit of extra grip. And this little guy is quite new. That sits in there and it allows you to eliminate the dreaded tailbone rub if you're a person who suffers from it. It's got an adhesive backing on it. It is just a piece of chamfered foam, but um, as far as something that comes off the shelf that can help a lot of people with a very similar problem with a lot of skis, not just Epic skis, I reckon that's a pretty good bit of kit as well. Down now to the bow. It's one of those things that tends to draw people's attention when they go to buy a new ski or, or, or are seeking a point of difference. Since the V12 came out, every single boat that's followed it in that genre, including a revamp to the V8 Double, has featured this more raked forefoot in the bow. Epix had a very vertical section there in the bow. It locked the bow in when you were surfing and when you were when you're uh, chasing waves, it's, it's where the thing tracks from, obviously, because water pressure comes onto both sides of that sharp edge and keeps the boat in place. Um, but by raking that forefoot, what they've done is allow that bow to release when you're trying to change direction in a hurry. Combined with a fair bit more rocker, for those who don't know, rocker's the banana shape of the boat, from just underneath where you sit forward it's an important change. It, it, it's, um, again, like I know when we designed our own sea kayak, the Audax, people immediately look straight at the bow and say, oh, that's a plum bow. That's because it does this, this, and this. Well, that's not quite right. Different plum bows do different things. And, and this one is really all about maneuvering on waves. It's very good. It's really successful at it. It'll, the boat does feel quite maneuverable when you're, uh, when you're trying to skip from one runner to the next and link, a, link them up. Down at the stern here, another, another big change, if I can just sort of get down a bit lower, I don't know if the camera will pick up the angle there of rocker from the seat aft all the way swept up to the stern. It's substantially more than have been present in the Generation 2 Epic skis. Again, that's all about shaping the boat into waves, allowing you to release that stern so it's not sitting in the water and, and making the boat track when you don't want it to. And that's really important when you're trying to turn. It, it has a, when you, when you put it in combination with a hull that, that has no defining transition points in it, like a really organic shape, what you end up with on the water is the ski that, that that sort of follows your eyes. And I always think the good skis um, do that. You look left, you tend to bring your right shoulder forward as your eyes turn, look left. Your right bum cheek, if you like, sits down harder on that side as well. The edge that you're trying to turn towards lifts out of the water and a good ski will automatically move that way. Um, I, I quite often describe turning kayaks and skis with your eyes. Um, it only applies to the good ones, the, the boats that we love that manoeuvre really instinctively and this well and truly does that.
It's a really nice feature and it's quite a departure from the uh, shape of the Generation 2 Epic skis. And now obviously to the hull, because this is the thing that really counts, right? Um, I don't know if the camera will pick it up there. You probably can just see the very suggestion of a V here. In this section, it travels aft a little further than, um, and a little more defined than what you'd normally associate with a boat like the V8 Pro or the V8. Um, and again, that's all about making that bow track because now there's a little less of it stuck into the water. But it tracks from a position that's further back so that if the the, real, the bow of the boat is out of the water because you've, 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 you're trying to turn, you've still got something there keeping the boat on a nice straight line. The V10, the step up from this, it turns on outrageous angles. I, I've, I've had it at points where I was sure it was going to broach on a wave on an ocean runner and it doesn't. So you just get braver and braver and keep turning on more and more outrageous angles and you get them. So it's a nice, uh, a, a nice hull feature that, that Epic have obviously been working on. The shape, um, there are boats out there with little chines and bumps and quite defining points of change. And my argument there has always been you've never seen a, a tuner with a chine, a hard chine. And um, it was the principle that guided us when we designed our own, our own fast sea kite, the Audax. Um, if there's no strange points in the hull, where you can probably be fairly safely sure that there's not going to be any strange movements either. And that plays out with this ski. Although it's not, if, I, if the, logical, the logical thing to do is to compare this boat to the V8 Pro, because that's what it's superseded, that's what it's kind of aiming at. Um, I think Epic would quite like the idea of people who had a V8 Pro stepping up to this ski. Um, it is a little bit less stable. It's, it's a nice step up, it's a very manageable step up. Um, and that's brought about by the fact that that is one very forgiving hull. It's not a beginner's boat, you know, no, no question. It's not a boat many people can just jump straight into and go for it, unless they're very ambitious or they've got some sort of water sports background. But um, it's definitely not as demanding as the V10 Sport, a boat that it's essentially replaced, and obviously nothing like the elite skis, the V10s and 11s and 12s. So yeah, the, the, the comparison with the V8 Pro I think is a, a fairly valid one, less so than the V10 Sport. Um, it's a smaller ski than the V10 Sport in every way. Um, so big guys who fit it into a V10 Sport, you know, they might find this one a little bit of a harder one to get into. Um, but um, the smoothness of transition, the, the lack of surprises, they're a, they're a really nice feature of the V9. Another nice feature of these little carry handles at the front, um, fore and aft. I, I don't know why they're not on all skis, really. Um, they're a nice safety feature coming, as I do, from a sea kayaking background where I've seen over the years the worst things that can possibly happen. Um, anything that allows you to grab a hold of the boat when everything's gone pear-shaped is a good thing. Um, there at the front and the back of the boat, as are the carry handles that I mentioned earlier. Uh, as far as ha uh, these little deck bungees are a standard thing on Olympic skis, uh, you know, you can put a little deck bag in there if you feel inclined. There's the back carry handle along with the, the surf rudder, which is um, really responsive. Um, you know, if anything, it takes a little bit of getting used to just how fast and hard it makes you turn on waves. Um, the build, well, Epic skis have come in recently under their quoted weights by some margin, actually. Um, I used to sell a, an ultra ski like this in the old days with a word of caution that they were light and you had to have respect for that weight. But my V10 demo, I've had it now for two years. I would have done half a dozen contact rescues in it every single week over that period probably where people have bashed and banged into me, hit me with paddles. I've been T-boned a couple of times. Um, one really very sickening collision at one point and all it did was bounce off and put a crack in the gel coat so they're tough the the outer gel coat is probably the hardest of any of the ski brands um, and that weight saving that you get nowadays which they're not advertising much so kind of epic you got to let people know these boats are so lighter um, makes them a beautifully built ski you know i, I uh, 
I, I can't remember any one coming back with a bubble or a, a, a problem with manufacturing in all the years we've been selling them. And this latest lot, whatever they've been doing recently with their layups, is working. They're, uh, they're a beautifully built boat. So who's going to be interested in, in buying this, this ski? Um, you know, they all have their target markets. Uh, they all fit into a niche. And, and nowadays, more and more, they're inventing their own little niches to, to slot into. There's no more beginner, intermediate, elite. There's a whole bunch of sub-branches in between. This boat is not a beginner's boat. However, if you're an ambitious beginner, it'd be worth having a go and seeing how you feel. It's definitely got a little less stability than the V8 Pro, but in many ways the V8 Pro probably had a little bit too much stability to be a fun boat in waves. You know, it, it gave up a little bit of that instinctiveness to stability. Um, so if you've been paddling a V8 Pro, again, that's not a beginner's boat. Um, it, it's a step up. We do the test all the time. We put people in a boat like a V8 and a V8 Pro and there are quite a lot of people who can't paddle the V8 Pro. They'll wobble around and they'll jump in a V8 and feel really cheerful. Um, there's now a slightly bigger gap, but if you're fit and motivated and you're prepared to have a bit of a go and you don't want to buy something that you're probably going to be shifting on in six months time when you get better, this isn't a step too far. A V10 or a V10 Sport, in my opinion, were. They're just, you just, there are very few people who could start off their surf ski paddling in one of those. Um, back in the old days, that's what we had to do, of course. Um, but not as many people stuck with it like they do now with offerings like the V8 that you see sitting up behind me. So an ambitious beginner, maybe. Definitely somebody who's looking to shift up from one of the boats that occupy that space just in front of the, the, the entry level skis as well. Um, and then the people who really should buy it, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, one of our mates down on the south coast has a saying that these guys will have too many numbers on their boats for today's conditions and, and I believe surf ski paddling is all about having fun in waves. I'd hate to be out there on a day when there was a 20 knot breeze blowing and nice steep waves and stuff to get out and attack and have a great time in and be worried about my stability. And I see it all the time. I see guys who sacrifice, and girls, uh, that minute and a half in their 10K time trial to the ability to take a surf ski in surf, in waves. So coming back down the other way, um, if you've been struggling on your V10 or your V11 or your V12, then you couldn't possibly imagine anything that's going to be more fun than this. It's awesome. It turns, it's reasonably quick. It accelerates a bit like an elite ski. I, I put one of my friends in it to do a bit of a photo shoot. There's a few images of him in, a few images of him in this video. I said to him, he normally paddles a V10L, and I said, sorry mate, you're probably gonna miss a few waves today for, for paddling in this thing, but um, um, you know, help me out here, let's get a few shots of it. He said, yeah, because he's a good fella. And at the end of the day, when we got there, we did about 16 Ks downwind on our favorite downwind run off the southern beaches of Sydney. He said, mate, I'd paddle that anywhere. That was, I hardly missed a wave. Um, when I leaned forward, it took off, it accelerated really nicely. Um, completely stoked, anytime you want me to paddle that, I'm, I'm up for it, I really enjoyed it. So that, that's, that's the, I, I guess sometimes people have to, have to have a little bit of a swallow of their pride when they drop back a ski, I think that's the wrong way of looking at it. But if you've been wobbling around a little in conditions that everyone else seems to be having fun in, this would be a good ski to buy. Um, you might find yourself spending an awful lot more time on this than you do on whatever it is that's been giving you a hard time. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm all ears. I seem to answer questions from all over the joint nowadays about these boats, possibly because we have a reputation for being reasonably even-handed and, and not pushing one over the other. Uh, I think for what I like doing um, and for the sort of paddling I encourage people to get out and do, again, I'm not a flat water coach or racer. There are days I'd rather stick forks in my eyes than plonk up and down a river at 11 kilometres an hour staring at my Garmin. So that isn't me. Um, 
I think this is one of the best skis I've ever got in and paddled for doing the sort of things that I like doing and, and what I encourage people to do. So thank you for watching. I hope it's been uh, informative. Um, and if you've got any questions, give us a shout. We've got stock of these skis. We, as I said, don't get me wrong, I'm trying to sell you one as well here. Uh, and, uh, and get in touch through our, through our site, expeditionkayaks.com. Thanks for your time.